Hi there viewers, it's another Thursday and this is a brunch show on Value Chain TV. I am Patience Moses and I have with me here in the studio Mr. Williams. He's going to help us through the newspaper review segment. Before we start the newspaper review, we're going to go on a short break. Join us shortly. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Uh, we're going to move in straight to the newspaper review. Mr. Williams, thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure. All right, uh, we're going to move straight to Vanguard newspaper and the story is making the headline says, FG threatens to revoke discourses, discourses licenses over poor power supply. Yes, you will agree with me that uh, over the last few months mm -hmm. that we have that have gone by, we have been experiencing uh, epileptic uh, power supply, True. not only in Abuja here, but across the Federation as well, because other states have been complaining as well. Uh, uh, until recently, we, we saw in Kaduna where the NERC had to take over the management board. Mm. And this was as a result of a mismanagement. And if uh, such are not, uh, such actions are not taken, mm. then uh, it will be uh, difficult for the common man, especially those who are managing small businesses to be able to cope with their business. If you have in 24 hours, you have less than one hour of supply, then it means they are going to rely heavily on diesel, mm. which is not easy to combat. Mm. At the end of the day, the uh, people who are going to be patronizing such businesses will now incur a lot because they are going to be bearing the bulk of this uh, mm. Uh, problem. Uh, the person who is selling, okay, maybe you are using energy and you don't have a power supply, you use diesel to generate energy. At the end of the day, you have to calculate mm -hmm. all this into your cost, cost and then transfer it to those who are going to be mm -hmm. patronizing. So these are some of the challenges you are going to be facing. So it is a wake up call and it is a right step in the right direction. Okay. So the government should take action and see that such issues are resolved okay. as soon as possible and probably revoking the license will show that they are very very serious absolutely there are other, there are other people who are willing mm -hmm. uh, in the private sector for example if a doesn't work go for b yes so we should not rely on those who cannot deliver mm, true okay so we're going to the punch newspaper 24 states can't pay salaries without FG allocation. And this is coming from the budget committee. Well, it's quite a shame for a country like Nigeria. If we look at the 36 states of Nigeria, there is hardly a state that you say does not have one resources mm. or another. If you go to maybe states like Kaduna, Kogi, in fact, so many of them, Lord. aside oil, let's forget about oil. You have gold, you have other resources. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is, what is the federal government doing? Why should the state keep on relying on the center for maybe salary and the rest of them? Why can't these states use their resources to better their own lot? There are states that are into agriculture, for example. So why can't they use what they have? So this means that the law needs to change. Mm -hmm. You know, recently we were talking about the uh, Federal Ministry of Mines uh, cautioning some states. Uh -huh. yeah, so something this. needs to be done. Yes, exactly. Power should be given to the states. Mm -hmm. Let them use what they have to generate income mm -hmm. so that they can take care of their citizens. They don't have to be coming to Abuja every now and then looking for money to pay salaries. Mm -hmm. No, they have what it takes. So. Uh, the National Assembly should wake up uh, so that they can change these laws. Mm -hmm. These laws, they are not beneficial to anybody. So nobody is benefiting from these laws. We can have an amendment, mm -hmm. especially now that they are talking about constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. So let the states be able to generate mm -hmm. what they can use at the end of the day. So this is what the government should be looking at instead of 
uh, every now and then people, uh, state governors coming for Abuja to collect money every month while they are sitting on, on gold mines okay. in their, in their states. So this is more yeah. like um, an advocacy for state autonomy. Absolutely. But then what happens to fear for violation of power? At the end of the day, there are checks and balances. Okay. So the, the government can decide to work it out. Mm -hmm with some certain percentages. Mm -hmm. Actually, it is not going to be outright mm -hmm. saying, okay, states should take 100% uh, control of their resources. Okay. Yes, they can be contributing mm -hmm. to the center okay. and this can be work, uh, can be uh, put into uh, something that is workable at the end of the day. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, this next headline from Business Day is actually, I don't know, it's not funny, but it's funny. It's, that is alarming. It says, Gary price doubles as cassava output shrinks. And this is, I know Gary used to be, they say like, it's the poor, poor man's food. But with the way things are, the last time I bought a cup of Gary, it was more than 100 naira. Exactly. <laughs> I remember a few years when I was in the village. I I I, I, I love drinking Gary. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when I took Gary, my dad said, no, don't take Gary in my house. I said, why? I love it. He said, no, if you come to the village and you take Gary, they will think maybe you are, you are very poor. Uh -huh. So in my village, we produce Gary, but we don't take Gary. Uh, Instead, we, we sell it, we make people. it out. Yeah. <laughs> so when they see you taking Gary, they say, ah, this person is very, very poor. Uh, but suffering. that is not the case mm -mm. today. It is very, very expensive. And even the common man cannot even afford it. Mm -hmm. So the there are so many factors surrounding this. Okay. Uh -huh. Aside insecurity, we have a uh, production cost, mm -hmm. overhead costs, and so many of them. True. So, so many people are going out of businesses these days. Because at the time, by, by the time you check, okay, I want to start a Gary processing business. Mm -hmm. And when you check the overhead costs, it is not something you can bear. So at the end of the day, you have Mr. A closing down, Mr. B closing down. Then the, what do you call it? The consumers are getting higher and higher every day. Mm -hmm. More people are consuming Gary every day. But to match up with production becomes a problem. Okay. Definitely it will shrink. Mm -hmm. So uh, insecurity, cost of production, these are factors that need to be checked, okay. especially insecurity. Okay. If we are talking about food security, the government should be able to guarantee uh, security first and foremost. Mm -hmm. People should be able to go to the farms with their eyes closed. Not that, okay, you are in the farm and then you are thinking of somebody coming to attack you. Your life is at stake. Your life is in danger. Mm -hmm. Definitely people will not go to the mm -hmm. farms. This reminds me of a recent a report I saw on the newspaper that in Cardinal State, some farmers are like, it's like a negotiation process. They have to pay um, bandits or kidnappers a particular amount of money to allow them to go to their this, farms. This is the current situation, oh. unfortunately. People in, in, in local communities, before they go to the farm, they have to pay royalties. <laughs> yes. It is no longer the government that is collecting revenue. If even the government cannot go to such places. Mm. So the bandits, they have taken over such communities. And if you want to farm, you must pay some level of royalties before they allow you to go to the farm. If uh, at the time you are harvesting, you have to also pay them. So these are some of the challenges they are facing. So and this is the reality on ground. Mm. The government needs to do something for such things to uh, be put behind us so that we can ensure food security. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams. Thank I think we've exhausted much. all the headlines we have here. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a pleasure having you here. Thank That's you so much. Me. Okay, our viewers, uh, we're going to take a short break. And then after that, we're going to another segment. This week on History, where we're going to join SA Ufoma for the updates. Do stay with us. On March 4, 1999, military government freed the remaining people in prison two years earlier for plotting a coup against the late dictator General Sani Abacha including Abacha's deputy, Oladipo Diya, who was on death row. On March 6, 1909, late Chief Obafemi Awolowo was born in Ikene, Ogun State. He was a Nigerian nationalist and statesman who played a key role in Nigeria's independence movement, the First and Second Republics, and the Civil War. 
is most notable as the astounding first premier of the Western region, but was also a successful federal commissioner for finance and vice president of the Federal Executive Council in the Civil War and was thrice a major contender for his country's highest office. On March 7, 2007, Atiku Abubakar was cleared to take part in the presidential poll, overturning a decision by the Electoral Commission to disqualify him. On March 8, 1911, the International Women's Day was founded. IWD is a global day dedicated to recognizing the achievements of women and advocating for gender equality. It has been celebrated for over a century to highlight the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women. It is a day to inspire and empower women around the world. On March 10, 2010, 5,000 activists staged a march in Abuja to demand the sacking of the cabinet and a public appearance by former President Umaru Yaradua. The late President Umaru Yaradua, earlier before this date, had been ill and flown abroad for treatment. He stayed for so long that there was pressure that his government should retire and his deputies sworn in as his replacement. Thank you so much, S.A. Ufoma, for that interesting segment. And with this, we can say, uh, if Aolo was still here with us, it would be happy birthday in areas. Yesterday was his birthday. And then tomorrow, 8th of March, would be International Women's Day. So to all the women out there, thank you so much for being wonderful and exciting and exceptional women and ladies. This is a shout out to you all. You are wonderful and this is also another shout out and a call out for you to go out tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Do something great for yourself. Appreciate yourself and enjoy the fact that you are a woman. Happy International Women's Day in advance. Thank you again, S.A. Ufoma. So this is still the Braun Show and we're going to be moving straight on to another segment. But then let's go on a break and we'll be right back. Okay, you're still watching the Braun Show on Value Chain TV. We're moving to the entertainment segment. Yes, entertainment segment. I know you've been waiting for this segment. Um, well, what I have for us today on the entertainment segment is more like um, a record-breaking gist. Tribe, a tribe called Judah is finally out of um, the board for the 20 top movies on the list. But it did not just leave. It didn't just drop out. There was a magnificent and incredible performance that this particular movie by Funke Akindele brought to our screens. So it says a tribe called Judah and cinemas run with 1.4 billion. This is the highest so far any Nollywood movie has made it on this what on these charts. And this is a great one. I'm sure this, like, this is a great achievement for Funke Akindele and her production crew. This movie, I must say, we all enjoyed it. It was a blockbuster. It was mind blowing. It was exceptional. And then, so it says after, um, after 11 weeks, according to data released by the Cinema Exhibitors Association of Nigeria, the film grossed only 14,745 naira in its final weekend. This was before February when it was when it was um, between February and February 23rd and February 25th before it started screening in just two locations and then after that it kept on increasing and increasing and it was a very great one so on this note we just want to use this opportunity to give a shout out to Funke Akindili and her crew to keep doing Nollywood proud and making a lot of um Making, making the movie industry more exciting and even more lucrative. 1.4 billion 
Blera is not a joke. Yes. And I particularly chose this um, entertainment gist. It's like, um, should I say a shout out for Funke Akindele because she's an incredible woman. Tomorrow being International Women's Day. She has been doing a lot and then her impact in Nollywood is, is, it cannot be overestimated. It cannot be overemphasized. She has been doing a lot for the industry, bringing in very nice and great movies. So this is a shout out to her. And if you have um, extra comments you want to give to her and for this achievement the movie has made, you can drop it on our comment segment. So this is it. This is it. And the hit has been a lot. So I just want to urge us all to be very careful and be more conscious about our health because this period a lot of diseases are flying up and down so we have to be very careful so here are a few tips that you can actually take so you should take a lot of water to stay dehydrated because you're sweating a lot you're losing so much water so it is advisable you take what take more water as much as you're also releasing while you're sweating and urinating a lot. So it is advisable to drink a lot of water. And also be very, very careful with the kind of contact you make. You're taking public transport and hepatitis is very contagious with sweat. So you come in contact with a lot of people. So you also try to be very careful the way you come in contact with people in public places. So you don't get yourself contaminated too. And for those people that are having serious skin problems this is also a very good time for you to make sure you use more of um this mentholated powders to prevent heat rashes on your skin so that your skin doesn't develop some kind of blemish and then make you look somehow that you wouldn't want to and then take your bath regularly it will help to cool your system and make sure that there is a balance in your temperature I hope that was useful and um, on these notes i'll be bringing it to a wrap thank you so much for staying thank you for joining me i remain patient moses and i hope to see you again next time if you have any comments you have any suggestion just make sure you drop them on the comment section on our youtube channel thanks for staying do have a great day ahead